Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to continue our study on simplifying radicals. And again, we're going to be focusing strictly on square roots. And in this lesson, we're going to look at what's called the quotient rule. In the previous lesson, we looked at the product rule. And so in this lesson, we're going to look at the quotient rule. Now, just a reminder, so remember the product rule basically said this, when, you're, when you have a, prod, a square root of a product of factors, then you can rewrite this expression as the product of the square root of every factor. So the square root of A times B is the square root of A times the square root of B, okay? And so um, let's, let's, con let's talk about the, the idea of that quotient rule. Okay, so we know we know this idea. We know that the that the square root of 16 divided by 4 is, now 16 divided by 4 is 4, right? So that's the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is what? 2. So, so we know this. We know that the square root of 16 divided by 4 is 2, right? But what about this? We also know that the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 4. And if I look at the numerator, what's the square root of 16? Well, that's 4. If I look at the denominator, what's the square root of 4? Since 4 is a perfect square, 16 is a perfect square, they're all perfect squares here. Um, since, since 4 is a perfect square, the square root of 4 is, is 2, and so 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we have this also. We have the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 4 is also equal to 2, right? So, so if I look at those two statements here, so these two expressions are equal to the same number. So that means that these two have to equal to each other. So that means, so this means that the square root of 16 divided by 4, I can rewrite, see how I'm taking the square root of a, of a fraction? Then I can rewrite it as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So that's what that means. So this right here means this. So then that takes us to the quotient rule then. So the quotient rule. All right, the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says this. Um, the square root of a fraction, a divided by b, I can write as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. All right, and again, we're assuming that, that the that the square root of a and the square root of b are real numbers. So those must be real numbers. So in other words, in other words, in other words, um, a and b cannot be negative because remember the square root of a negative number is not a real number. Okay? The other thing I gotta mention is this. See I have a have a have a fraction. And remember, you can never divide by zero. So the other thing I gotta mention is this. B cannot equal zero. Alright, so a and b can be any positive number or zero, but b cannot be zero because that makes this denominator zero. All right, so this is quotient rule for square roots. All right, now we talked about the the product rule for square roots, right? That was this right here. And so knowing knowing this lesson will help you with this one because it's basically the same idea. All right, so let's get number one. So I'm going to simplify. We're going to simplify um, the following. Now, just, just keep in mind, and the same thing applies. It's important you see this, that the, a square root is simplified when the radicand contains no perfect square factors other than one. So that's that idea from the previous lesson when we talked about product rules still applies here. So you got to make sure, you got to make sure that, that um, your, your radicand is, is as simplified as it can be. Okay? All right. So number one, let's suppose we had this. The square root of 16 divided by 25. All right, now again, first thing I would do is, is rewrite this using the quotient rule. So according to the quotient rule, when, when I have the square root of a fraction, then I can rewrite this as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator, right? And so notice that, that I can simplify the square root of 16 because 16 is a perfect square. So what's the square root of 16? Well, that's 4. I can simplify the square root of 25 because, because uh, 25 is a perfect square and the square root of 25 is 5. So there's your answer. All right, so that's the answer number one. So, so the square root of 16 divided by 25 is 4 fifths. Number two, 
let's suppose we had the square root of 2 divided by 49. All right, well, according to the quotient rule, see, I have a quotient here, I have a fraction. So according to the quotient rule, I can rewrite this as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. And, and let's simplify this. Can I simplify the square root of 2? So that goes back, guys, that goes back to the previous lesson. So, so remember, a, a square root is simplified when, when the radicand contains no perfect square factors other than 1. So, so if you look at the perfect squares right here, are there, besides 1, are there any other perfect squares that go into 2? No. So you're done. For the numerator. Now look at the denominator. So the numerator is going to leave the square root of 2. What's the square root of 49? Since 49 is a perfect square, 49 is a perfect square, right? Since 49 is a perfect square, what's the square root of 49? 7. And so there's your answer. So the square root of 2 49 is equal to square root of 2 divided by 7. And notice that, that the you still have a square root, but I can't simplify it further. Okay? Number 3. Suppose we had the square root of 45 divided by the square root of 49. All right, well, according to the quotient rule, I can write this as a square root of 45 divided by the square root of 49. All right? Okay, now I'm going to ask you this. So, so I used the quotient rule to rewrite this, to rewrite this to look like this. Okay? Now, let's... let's look at the square root of 45, the numerator. So remember, once we got to this point right here, we had to see if I can go any further. So can I simplify this further? Yes, because those were perfect squares. Can I simplify this further? No, because there was no perfect square other than 1 that went into 2. So the square root of 2 was simplified. Now look at this. Let's talk about the square root of 45. Can I simplify the square root of 45? So is there a perfect square other than 1, other than 1, that goes into 45? And the answer is yes. Which, what is it? It's 9. So that means this. That means I can rewrite the square root of 45. And by the way, it helps if you kind of do the work on the side. And so the square root of 45 is the square root of 9 times 5. And remember, always put the perfect square first. Then using a product rule. So notice that in these problems, there are you're going to use the quotient rule and then you may, chances are you will, use the product rule as well. So now we're going to use a product rule. So according to the product rule, so this is a product rule now. According to the product rule, I can rewrite this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And since 9 is a perfect square, the square root of 9 is 3, so you get 3 square root of 5. So that's the numerator. So the numerator is 3 square root of 5. Okay? So, so you do need to know your previous lesson. So that's why we, we talked about the product rule first in the previous lesson because it's also needed in some of these problems that we're doing now. And what's the square root of 49? Well, since 49 is a perfect square, since 49 is already a perfect square, the square root of 49 is 7. And there's your answer. Can't do anything else. The square root of 5 is simplified. Number 4, we have the square root of 12 divided by 81. The square root of 12 divided by 81. Okay, let's do the quotient rule first. So remember, the first thing we did was a quotient rule. We wrote the square root of this fraction as the quotient, or as the, the um, uh, well, let's use quotient, the quotient of the square root of the numerator divided by the denominator, square root of the denominator. And so this will be the square root of 12 by the quotient rule, the square root of 12, square root of the numerator, divided by the square root of the de denominator. Now let's simplify the square root of 12, if I can. See, it, I could, here, I could not simplify that square root of 2, so I wrote it as square root of 2 because the square root of 2 is equal to itself. What perfect square goes into 12 and use the largest? Well, besides 1, the largest is 4, right? So it will be the square root of 4 times 3. See, it helps for some of you. For some of you, you can go from here to the answer. For some of you, you actually have to write it out, and there's nothing wrong with that. I have to do that sometimes myself. So that's going to be the, and now using a, using a product rule, that's going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And so... And so that's the square root of 4 is 2, so you get 2 square root of 3. So that's your numerator, 2 square root of 3. The denominator square root of 81 is 9, right? Okay. Now, don't make the mistake and try and simplify 3 and 9 because that's not a 3. Is this a 3 that you see? No, that's a square root of 3. 
All right, so the square root of 3 is not 3. All right, so you, can, you cannot simplify this any further. So that's your answer. Okay, number 5. All right, number 5, we have uh, this problem. So see, it's not that bad. If you, if you, if you uh, understood the previous lesson and if you understand uh, this, what we mean by the quotient rule, then, then this is not difficult. All right, so here's number 5. We have negative square root of 2, I'm sorry, 15. Negative square root of 15 divided by 36. Negative square root of 15 divided by 36. So again, I'm taking the square root of a, of a fraction, so I'm going to use the quotient rule for square root. So that means I'm going to rewrite this as, remember, don't forget, it's negative. The square root of 15 divided by the square root of 36. Now let's talk about the square root of 15. Can I simplify the square root of 15? Is there, is there besides one, is there another perfect square that goes into 15? No. So I cannot simplify the square root of 15. So the square root of 15 is equal to itself. So that's going to be the numerator. So I'm going to get negative square root of 15. And then the square root of 36, since 36 is a perfect square, that's, that's going to be 6. Square root of 36 is 6. So there's the answer. Okay. Number 6. We have negative square root of 75 divided by 49. So using the quotient rule, I'm going to rewrite the square root of this quotient as, neg and don't forget it's negative, square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. And so let's, talk, let's go to the side and see if I can simplify the square root of 75. So what perfect square, what perfect square besides 1, so if you look at your perfect squares, what perfect square besides besides 1 will go into 75 evenly. So 25, right? So I can rewrite the square root of 75 as, and again, it helps if you do this, write it out, 25 times 3. And so now this becomes the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And so since 25 is a perfect square, I can simplify the square root of 25. That's just 5 square root of 3, and I cannot simplify the square root of 3 any further because the only perfect square that goes in it, the right again, 3, is 1. So my numerator is going to be negative 3, I'm sorry, 5, negative 5, square root of 3. The denominator, since 49 is a perfect square, right, 49 is a perfect square, so that means if I take the square root of 49, I get 7. And so there's your answer. So the answer, let me write this a little bit better. So the answer is negative 5 squared 3 divided by 7. Okay? And then finally, number 7. Again, okay, number 7, we have the square root of 7 divided by 100. And so using the quotient rule, I'm going to write the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 100, right? Now, can I simplify the square root of 7? So if I go off to the side and I think about that, what perfect square goes into 7? What's the, what's the largest perfect square that goes into 7? The answer is 1. So, so that means that, that I cannot simplify the square root of 7 any further. So the square root of 7 is equal to itself. So I'm going to rewrite the numerator of the square root of 7. 100 is a perfect square, right? 100 is a perfect square because to get to 100, I said 10 times 10. So if 10 times 10 is 100, then the square root of 100 is what? 10. And there's your answer. And so that was a quotient rule. All right. So notice notice that that there were when using a quotient rule, when using a quotient rule, there were times when you also had to when we simplified the numerator and the denominator. All all in all these problems, notice that the denominators were all the the radicands in the denominators were all perfect squares. That's not always going to be that way, but in this lesson it was. Okay. So I just needed you to focus on the numerators to make sure that, that we use the product rule to simplify it further. All right. So that's going to be the end of this lesson on simplifying radicals using the quotient rule. And these were square roots using the quotient rule.